Is the cover paper over? Transformations can be combined so that a function moves multiple times. If the quadratic function is written in vertex form, as our examples here on example number two are, we can quickly identify the transformation and be able to graph the function. So once again, at this point in time, I'm not going to take the calculator out of your hand. But I do want to point out that there is a definite pattern in our function, in the parent function. It is, we start at 0, 0. The vertex is at 0, 0. And then we move one space to the right and one up. That gives us the point 1, 1 on our parent function. And then from the vertex, we go two spaces to the right and four up. Again, from the vertex. The other side is also the same. We move one space to the left and one up, counting from the vertex, and two spaces to the left and four up, counting from the vertex. So if we take a look at this particular problem here, what we see is vertex form. Our problem is given in vertex form. So when we identify the vertex, since it says plus two, we're going to have negative two, and then negative seven. Different algebra two teachers say it different ways. I like to say, change the sign, keep the sign. Now, once we have that, we can identify the transformations as well as draw the picture without a calculator. Still not gonna take the calculator out of your hand, but eventually algebra two teachers will take it out of your hand. Plus two. Inside the parentheses means that we're going to move our graph left to the minus seven outside the parentheses means that we're going to move our graph down. And we can draw the picture starting with the fact that we've already identified our vertex, so it's negative two, negative seven. And again, there's a pattern on the quadratic, which is from this point that I have graphed on the screen, we're going to count one space to the right and one up. From the vertex, negative 2, 7, I'm also going to go two spaces to the right and four up. So. One, two, one, two, three, four. Jumbles up the picture a little bit with those dots on there. It's the same pattern on the other side, but it's the other side. So we're going to go one space to the left from the vertex, one up. And two spaces to the left from the vertex, four up. And there's our picture. Again, I'm not taking the calculator out of your hands right now, but I want to lay the foundation so that when we do take the calculators out of our hands, we have some tools to use. First one you've seen like that, so let's look at another one. Start with identifying what we know here. There's our vertex form, our vertex. Change the sign, keep the sign. Change the sign, keep the sign. Five, two. The minus five inside the parentheses means that we're going to move our graph right. Five. The plus two outside of our parentheses means that we're going to move up two. And our patterns are going to be coming from around the vertex. So when we come over here and graph the vertex, five, two. Once again, the same pattern. One space to the right, one up. From that point, one space to the right, one up. Two spaces to the right, one, two, three, four up. Same pattern on the other side, but it's the other side. So we're going to go one space to the left from the vertex, one up. Two spaces to the left, 
four up. And there's our quadratic, also known as a parabola. Identify the vertex. And what we see, change the sign, keep the sign. Negative six, four. The plus six in the parentheses means that we move it the opposite direction that we think we're going to move it. Since it's plus six, we're going to move the graph to the left. Outside of the function, plus 4, we move it the way we think we're going to move it. Plus 4 indicates that we're going to move it up 4. But we were able to identify the vertex right from the start. So we're going to graph that. Negative 6, 4. And then apply the pattern to that, which is from that point, one space to the right, one up. Two spaces to the right from the vertex, two spaces to the right, one, two, three, four up. And the same pattern on the other side. One space to the left, one up. From the vertex, two spaces to the left, four up. And there's our quadratic. Once again, let's identify what we know. Vertex. Change the sign, keep the sign. Two, negative three. What's in the parentheses? It works the opposite way that we think it's going to work. So it says minus two. That means we're going to move our graph right. Two. It says minus three. We're going to move our graph down. Three. And let's graph the vertex. 2, almost went the wrong way, 2, negative 3, here's a vertex. And then the pattern from the parent function. From the vertex, one space to the right, one up. Two spaces to the right, and four up. One space to the left, one up. From the vertex, two spaces to the left, and four up. And there's our quadratic. Now lastly, we can use this idea combined with what we've already learned in this unit to figure out, to write the equation in vertex form and then figure out our transformations. In this case, how are we shifting? So, a couple things here. I'm moving this over so I have enough space. But remember the process. We want to write this equation in vertex form. So, our first step is to put the 1, the negative 1 in this case, on the other side. We're going to add 1 to both sides. Personal preference. I prefer 1 plus y. There is nothing wrong with writing y plus 1. There is no number in front of the x squared term. So we don't have to worry about factoring anything out. So we can go directly to adding our box. Because we are going to complete the square. And when we complete the square... We're going to look at this number in front of the box, which is 10. It's positive 10, in fact, divided by 2 squared. And if we add that value to the right side, we're going to add that value to the left. And we're going to simplify. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Plus 1. Plus y. Again, over here, it's also going to be 5. 
We write it in that format because we're creating a perfect square trinomial, which means that these parentheses are going to have the same value. So rather than take the time to split the middle, x squared is x times x, 5 squared is 5 times 5, and 5 is positive. Remember that the 10x is hidden in those two parentheses. On the other side, you can start to simplify a little bit more. 5 squared is 25 plus 1 plus y. 25 plus 1 is 26 plus y. And we can condense over here on the right side. It be x plus 5 squared. And writing in vertex form means that we're going to solve for y. So we're going to move the 26. And we get y equals x plus 5 squared minus 26. And what the problem asks for over here in the box is what is the turning point? Change the sign, keep the sign. So it's going to be negative 5, negative 26. And then what are our transformations? Well, the value inside the parentheses plus 5, we go the opposite way that we think we're going to go. So this is going to be left 5. And then the minus 26, we're going the direction we think we're going to go. It's outside of the function, so we're going to go down. Thank you.